In 2015, a man with a handful of IMDb credits won Best Supporting Actor over actors like Sylvester Stallone, Tom Hardy, and The Hulk. Most people asked, who is this guy? Who beats The Hulk? And the Oscar goes to... Mark Rylance, Bridge of Spies. The main reason you may not have heard of Mark Rylance is because he spent most of his career in the theater, and most of that in England. His resume includes being the artistic director of Shakespeare's Globe Theater for 10 years and winning a slew of theater awards, including three Tony Awards, which is also known as half an Audrey McDonald. So what's so special about him? Actors are usually applauded for fully inhabiting a character, being a chameleon and completely transforming into someone else. However, actors always bring a piece of themselves to a role. It could be their mannerisms, or their essence, or even their vocal tics, like this. Uh, 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 oh, you know, it's like, uh, and, and so that's the part I like, perfect, is these perfect. little noises you make. But for Mark Rylance, and why I think he's so good, is because what he innately brings to his roles are stillness and innocence. Let's start with stillness. In Hollywood, the stereotype is that to win an Oscar, you have to have an Oscar moment. Some moment where you cry, yell, get naked, or die. But Mark doesn't do any of that in Bridge of Spies. When you watch the film, you'll notice he remains uniquely still. Instead of bringing his energy to you, you are pulled to him. But I found myself, and this was my good fortune, uh, that Mark had a tendency to draw you towards him. It's not as if he's not making any choices, but his choices are very small, almost internal, and often just the product of Rylance thinking very specific thoughts about his character. Just in real life, humans are not always constantly telegraphing an emotion. They're generally very still and full of thought. Mark also doesn't telegraph his thoughts, but you know they're there. It provides a sense of mystery, and this forces the audience to lean in. His way of drawing in the audience comes from his years of performing on stage. To captivate hundreds of people, Rylance finds it more successful to keep his emotions intimate rather than shoving them into the audience's face. Because when we first played at the Globe, we, we were also worried about not being heard. That we were all speaking like this, very loudly, once more into the breach, dear friends, once more. And it gets into a panicky thing, can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> And this is the kind of thing on the street, if you hear someone speaking like that, you're going, oh, that's trouble. I think I'm going to go over here. <laughs> Someone's lost their mind. Um, and and so, so unconsciously, that kind of masculine, and, and we had a voice teacher who came and said, you're all electrifying the audience. But, but their ears are closing. As much as you're speaking loudly, their ears are closing because they can feel the panic of you. And we had to learn a magnetic voice that drew the audience towards us. The second quality of why it's so engrossing to watch him is because he contains an aura of innocence, which is shown with purity and childlike wonder. And it's so endearing and relatable that when he imbues innocence into his characters, we can't help but feel for them or trust them. He even refers to his innate state of acting as a state of innocence. I'm often surprised when you laugh at something I'm doing. I don't know why are they laughing at that. <laughs> and, um, and then I realize why you're laughing, and, and I do it again, and you stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then gradually I claw myself back to the in innocent place I was uh, when you did laugh. As an actor, you cannot judge your character. Judgment dilutes your performance, and the audience will notice. You must be innocent to any judgment, and this innocence shines through Rylance. And it's one of the many reasons he's been cast in films as characters who contain purity and innocence. The BFG in The BFG, or Halliday in Ready Player One, or even the steadfast father in Dunkirk. His innocence also works when he's playing villains or threatening characters. It adds believability to them and makes them more terrifying. For example, Rylance plays Richard III in this scene from Shakespeare's Richard III, and it becomes comedic with his innocent air. And the scene is written pretty dramatically. He's asking the queen, whose husband he just killed, to accept his pleas of love or to kill him. It's pretty dramatic, and yet he gets laughs. In this true breast, 
and let the soul forth that adoreth thee. I lay it naked to the deadly stroke and humbly beg the death upon my knee. Nay, do not pause. <laughs> Twas I that killed King Henry, but twas th 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 thy beauty that provoked me. One of my favorite Rylance moments is in the scene from Wolf Hall where he threatens an assistant. And he does it with such innocence and stillness, it's both hilarious and terrifying. If you stand there like a fish, I'll gut you. Mark is an incredible actor, and these are just a few tools in this actor's toolbox. If you want to see more of his work, I recommend trying to catch him on stage or watching his ever-growing collection of film and TV. And if you're an actor, I don't think you can mimic his style completely, but what you can mimic is Rylance's way of approaching a character by keeping thoughts intimate and by playing your character without judgment. And maybe if you do that, you can also beat the Hulk. Thank you.